terms of enabling the sample size for the research problem. And this leads our further discussion in terms of tolerance limit, in terms of delta difference. Okay. Let's proceed further. Sampling and sample size estimation. And if you recall our three verticals at uh, the beginning of the slide, I will go one by one. Before proceeding that, let's understand what is sampling error. <clears throat> so as I explained earlier, since we are not evaluating the whole population, <clears throat> we are taking a sample. So the estimate which we obtain from the sample may not be exact to reality of the population. We may be little bit far or closer up and down to the true reality. This little bit is due to the sample. If we have evaluated the whole population, possibly we may have been pinpoint targeted the actual reality. Now due to the sample, if we are little bit up and down or far or closer, this little bit difference from the true reality and our estimated value from the sample is the sampling error. This error is happening due to the sample, limitation in the sample. And this is called sampling error. Okay? This is exactly no error. There is no problem. We have tried to understand that due to the sampling, we may be little bit, little bit plus or minus with the true reality. And this little bit is due to the sampling and it is sampling error. There is no problem in my estimation. Now, we will try to understand the sample selection and it, its appropriateness. So, we are going to take the sample from the population. We have always, we have already targeted a population. We know the its reason, its uh, uh, boundary, its circumference. In most of the time in the clinical research, we close the population with some restriction like our geographical reason, our inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria and some kind of uh, other restriction. So with this, a population set is defined. Now we have to take the sample from that population. We have taken sample. Now, if my sample is true representative of this population, I have good internal and external validity. And once I obtain my result, my results are generalizable to my population. Whatever understanding I have from the sample, I can assume the same behavior, same understanding will be there in the population. But if my sample is not true representative, then my internal and external validity compromise. And this leads that my result from the sample may not be generalizable to the population. Sample say some other behavior, but population may have some different behavior. So, this, this will help us to understand that representation of the population in the sample is how much important. Because result, we want to apply on the population. Sample, we take in, we analyze, and now it is the result which need to be implemented somewhere in the population. So that's the important thing. Now remember the point number one when we started our research. With the exploratory research, we want to explore something. In this situation, we don't know how much closer we want to be with the true reality because nothing is known here. We want to explore. There may be many things come in our own process. So in this kind of research, there is no formal sample size calculation required. It depends on our budget and resource, how much sample we can take. Now, since we didn't calculate the sample size, then the problem can be, once we get the result from the sample, the result may not be generalized to the whole population. Limitation in the generalization of result. But these results can improve our understanding and uh, can generate multiple questions, multiple hypotheses. And this may be a basis for future research. We can conduct more research 
based on our upgraded knowledge from this exploratory research. Now, point number two, when we have the estimation problem. So, we don't have any pre-assumption. Pre we want to do the research, we want to measure our parameter and we want to conclude that what is our magnitude, what is the measurement magnitude. This is purely estimation problem. Now, let's understand with two examples. So, we are interested in average to know the average height from university. Okay, first. And then, second example, we want to know the prevalence of obesity in Assam University. Like obesity, I have defined BMI greater than 30, just for example. So, let's proceed. Couple of things before moving towards the sample size calculation. And again, try to correlate with the universe, population, on which you want to generalize the result, those concepts. So, first of all, question is, average height from university. What implies or some university implies. We have to be very very peculiar about that because we have to close a circumference on the population. So let's say some university. I am interested. Now just choose couple of some university. Measure their height and get it average. Done. So is it sufficient? Are you sure if another person will do the same thing totally independently than you, he will get the same result as you have? Maybe, may not be. So what enable you a surety? So to be sure and provide estimate, you want to build up a confidence interval. So if you get a height, average height say 170 centimeter, you want to say that, okay, maybe from 165 to 175, this is the interval. Anyone want to go and measure, he may get his average in between this. So this is a confidence interval construction. Now the question is, as I told, get go and get couple of implies and measure their height, get average. Where those couple of implies, are they adequate in number? to build your confidence and to provide a valid and reliable estimate. I am not, I don't know. So if I don't know, then the next question is, how much subject should be adequate for me? Now we have an answer for this. So this depends on your parameter, which you want to measure, like in one case height and in another case obesity. Behavior of the parameter, concern objective under its study. So let's understand it further. What is needed? A prior information about estimates, either from literature, publication. When I say estimate, it means on your parameter of interest, that's estimate. A prior information from the literature, publication, or you may have to do a pilot or exploratory study to know about that. Then, Tolerance limit, like difference from the true reality, which can be acceptable for you, delta or D. And then variability in your parameter of interest, their dispersion. And maybe some information about the population on which you are intended to generalize your result. Once this information available, agreed, then a sample size can be computed. Let's understand it with an example. So this is example of average height. Now, what is exact average is not important here in estimation process. But what is important is that how much deviation, how much departure from the true reality I can allow in my measurement in my average computation. So, let's assume that whatever is the true reality, say maybe 160, 165 or 170 centimeter, I don't know, but whatever it is, a plus minus 5 unit is acceptable. I can say that. Okay. 
or maybe a plus minus two unit is okay. How close you want to be with the true reality? That is important here. And then the standard deviation of your measurement. Now, how these are going to affect your overall sample size? I have going to demonstrate it. So, first try to understand what is the impact of tolerance limit. Okay, or the distance from the reality to your mean. So, let's say I am okay with the five unit of plus minus difference. I have fixed the standard deviation 12, 12, 12, just for demonstration purpose. If I am okay with the 5, maybe a sample size of 23 is sufficient. But if this is too much, I want to be more closer with the reality. So let's say 3 unit. With the same standard deviation, my sample size is 62. I want to be more closer with the true reality. So only plus minus 2 unit is allowed. Then for the same standard deviation, I have to collect 139 samples. So see, the more closer I want to be with in my estimate with the true reality, the more sample I have to collect. Now let's see what is the impact of standard deviation. Here I have seen, the more closer I want to be with the true reality, the more bigger the sample. Now with the standard deviation, this is another direction like the more smaller the standard deviation is more lesser the sample size needed more bigger standard deviation more bigger sample size so here i have fixed the distance from the reality to unit and then try to understand what is the impact of standard deviation so with 10 standard deviation we need 97 if i reduce in standard deviation we need 62. If I increase the standard deviation, we need 271. See, increasing standard deviation demands increasing sample size. Decreasing the distance, tolerance limit, demands the bigger sample size. This is the relation. And this is going to impact your overall sample size computation. Now try to understand the same thing. Here see, what is the exact reality? No one know. And even for sample size calculation, I also don't want to want it. I only want how much deviation I want to have from the true reality. Now let's see the same example with prevalence case. Okay. So case number two. And uh, before proceeding to the prevalence case, I would like to put another scenario here. 